Oh, Heather. Awesome. Here we go. Good morning and happy, happy Friday, everyone. It's Friday, July 29th. Just a couple more days before August 1st. We only have one more month uh, to the end of the summer. So thanks again for uh, taking time off your uh, schedule today to be on the uh, producer's mindset. I have the honor and the privilege of having Heather. Uh, Heather is a um, <clears throat> KW South Bay agent, phenomenal. And she's also a, uh, a mother of two. So Heather's British, so she may have a little bit of an accent. She's a formal flight attendant who after years of traveling was drawn to the beautiful uh, sunny uh, climates and prestige of the coastal here in the uh, Southern California area where she has since settled with her husband uh, back in 2016. Heather is a professional hard work realtor with a background in marketing and several years of excellent customer service experience under her belt. She has a strong work ethic, which I know personally she works hard and you know she, she resonates this every single day. She has a passion for helping uh, people. She has a very, very positive uh, attitude and she's also a great negotiator. She is here to uh, you know, help and support and, and give you some insights to uh, Heather. So without further ado, Heather, take it away. How are you? Good morning. I'm very well. How are you? Happy Friday. Happy Friday. So let's get started, Heather. So tell us um, <clears throat> a little bit of uh, your background. I, I didn't realize you were a flight attendant. So that definitely <laughs> helps with this uh, industry, right? Oh, yes, definitely. Um, okay, well, I guess I'll start with when I was a flight attendant. Um, that I actually started when I was 18. I did it for 10 years and um, it was a great experience. Um, it taught me actually, I guess, a lot of things that is very helpful in this business, like being prepared for a last minute emergency. <laughs> um, as well as, you know, just having a professional um, kind of image and, you know, just kind of, I think you've used this analogy before on previous talks where um, if there's, you suddenly hit turbulence, you're always looking to the flight attendant for some reassurance, you know, um, that everything's going to be okay. And I feel like definitely that's something that relates to what we do in this business. <laughs> So I did that for 10 years and then I ended up moving out here to Los Angeles in 2016 and uh, yeah, that was kind of the flight attendant part. Yeah, very cool. So <clears throat> why real estate? What uh, made you transition from a flight attendant now into real estate? Ta take us back then. Well, for as long as I can remember, I've always been in sales since about age 11. Um, because going back as far then, uh, even when my younger sister would want to borrow my clothes or take them or whatever, I would actually make her buy them. <laughs> so I, I would charge her. Um, and she actually paid me money to buy my clothes off me. And um, my parents, the way I was raised, if I ever asked them for money, they would say, you have to go out there and earn it. So I kind of always grew up with that like hustler mentality um, that, you know, what I have to go out there and like find a way to make that money. And sales was a really good way of doing that. Um, so then fast forward a few more years, when I was 18, um, I mean like 17 actually, right on the cusp of getting my driver's license, I saved up all the money myself by selling all my possessions on eBay. <laughs> so I kind of just got used to like selling and like making something like sound really good and taking the best photos and writing a really good description. Um, I never had it in my mind that I'm going to be in real estate. It was honestly um, all came about when I first moved to Los Angeles in 2016. My other passion I have is in fitness. Um, 
like health and fitness. So I ended up working for a gym, um, which was actually in sales. That was sort of like my first professional, like um, real interaction with sales um, in America. So um, that definitely was a good stepping stone too, because it was pretty much like selling gym memberships. Um, but I then, I didn't really have any formal experience before that, but the training they gave me definitely helped. Um, and I realized a lot of it is psychology. And so that was very helpful. And I would have to go out like prospecting, you know, like talking to people, getting a conversation going, learning about them, and then finding out what their goals are and seeing how I can help them and giving them a free, you know, trial to see how they like it. And then ultimately the goal was to sell them a membership. And then, so I ended up getting really good at that. I don't know like how I got good at it, but I just did. I just threw myself into it. And after a few months, um, the VP like offered me a promotion and said, like, do you want to be assistant general manager at Beverly Hills location? So I said, wow, OK, how can I turn that down? So I came across all kinds of different clientele, like everyone you can imagine, like from people that were really sweet to like those that were really difficult. But I just had the patience and, um, you know, just uh, kept a smile on my face really and um till I swiped the credit card and then boom done <laughs> so it was it was mainly like I did have to kind of deal with a lot of flack but um I was still professional polite throughout the whole thing because there's always going to be people that maybe you don't um really see eye to eye with but um at the end of the day all you're trying to do is like help them and give them a good service and, you know, be professional throughout, even if they can be kind of difficult. So um, that was a good stepping stone. And then my then uh, manager at the time, like actually left to go into real estate. And then um, not long after I actually um, was found out I was pregnant and um, went on my maternity leave and they, their schedule was like crazy, like six days a week, and they didn't really want to um, <laughs> accommodate me to give me like, um, you know, like a bit less hours because it was like 60 hours a week or something. So I said, you know, I need something that, you know, I can still apply these skills that maybe is a bit more lucrative and also like gives me a degree of flexibility with my schedule. And so I remember being in the delivery room and one of uh, my husband's friends was in there and he was kind of talking about one of his friends that was in real estate who, oh yeah, he just sold like a million dollar property and he got like 3%. And then, you know, my ears perked up. I said, wow, why don't I do this? So I pretty much just quit the uh, fitness industry and just said, I'm going to jump into real estate and do this. So I started studying like with my newborn uh, in tow and every time he's taking a nap, I'm there studying. So that was my version of time blocking. Um, I then passed the exam um, and then, yeah, here I am. So I started in 2019 and um, okay, I'll let you ask. Well, you said something earlier <laughs> that really resonates, you know, especially when you were working with uh, the gym, right? <clears throat> Sales. Yeah. And you said prospecting, right? Which is one of the key fundamentals that we do. We constantly tell each and every one of you, what are you doing that's going to generate opportunities, right? Well, it's prospecting, lead generating. That is the heart of what we do, because at the end of the day, you know, you can have the personality, you can have a charming uh, approach and you attract people, but also it, you, you need to do the necessary activities to get you. You, you said also you were out there, you know, hustling, uh, trying to get people to sign up, uh, you know, for memberships. And that in itself is, is hard, you know, compared to uh, real estate, because you are not selling yourself, you're selling the home, right? The American dream, being able to purchase a home, be, uh, be able to uh, invest in a home, or the opportunity to, uh, 
you know, sell their home and upgrade to a, a larger home, a better area, maybe they're living out of the estate, you know, so there's many uh, exciting aspects of real estate that we're just the pillar to that, right? We're just uh, making those connections and, but it takes, it takes uh, perseverance, but it also takes dedication and hard work. So in 2019, when you started, let's, let's go with your first uh, six to a year. How was your real estate experience, you know, getting in, having a real estate license? And now it's like, okay, what do I need to do? So take us back to that time. Uh, was it uh, an exciting time for you? Was it uh, very frustrating? Tell us a little bit about that. Yeah, of course, I was very proud to finally pass my exam after um, studying for so long and trying to just absorb all the information. So I was like armed and ready to just get going and get the um, get the ball rolling. So, um, yeah, I mean, even though I had that experience, it was still a lot to learn. And um, what I ended up doing was, I mean, I didn't have a sphere per se because um, I was kind of like fresh here and didn't know a lot of people. I had like, you know, just a handful of like friends that I've met through like the gym and things like that. But as far as like, you know, growing up here, no, I didn't really have like a wide network. So, um, I guess like it, I knew like how to be prepared because I'd already seen, you know, um, from reading that you need to have at least like six months of reserves and be prepared, you know, like budget and everything like that. So I knew what to expect. And um, that pretty much was how it happened my first year. So it took me about six months um, to get something under contract. So um, I actually closed my first sale in March of 2020 because it was a 60 day escrow so it was actually ended up being like eight months that I had to really like work hard to get my first sale but of course like once you've done one then it sort of has like a snowball effect right then you like build the confidence and then it's like okay like I've been through this whole thing now and um where's the next one let's keep going so I mean that's how it is in sales too like you you don't just like get one sale and go okay I'm done like you got to keep looking for the next one so um uh let's say like the first year I think I did like three sales and then I kind of looked back on that and was like not too you know happy with like what I'd done um because I was like I thought I could do better than that but I realized like I shouldn't be too hard on myself because I just beginning and you know this is only the start and actually um you know it's thanks to you Simon that I was you know hung in there because there was times where I was like oh can I really do this but you know Simon actually you were the one that believed in me and so that gave me the confidence to keep going and you know pushing myself because I am naturally a very driven person whatever I set my mind to I will do it and I realized, yeah, like I can do this. So, and not only that, you know, of course, like um, it's amazing to have, you know, such a awesome team of people right at our brokerage because everybody's so supportive. And on top of that, you know, it's like important to have the right people behind you, like a support system, like your family, your friends, because this is not a nine to five job. And of course, yeah, you know, so my husband has been a huge help and supporter of my business too, while I was trying to get things off the ground. And so I'm very thankful and grateful um, for all the people that I've had around me to support me through this journey. So yeah, that first year was, um, I mean, good, but I, wa I expected more of myself, <laughs> um, but, yeah, from 2020 onwards, after that first sale, things did definitely pick up. Um, I, I've since tripled, um, wait, no, done five, wait, more than five times that number. So I'm happy with that. 
yeah but I, yeah it's just one of those things you got to keep going there's so much to juggle at once with real estate that it can sometimes feel a little bit overwhelming especially trying to juggle that with family life <laughs> that's so true Often no, I, I i remember heather having the uh, conversation in my office <laughs> and um <clears throat> You even asked me if we can role play because you were going on your listing appointment. And I remember this very vividly that, um, you know, I was I was a seller and I was being very, very hard. I think a little too hard on you, but ultimately you handle it like a professional, uh, your demeanor, your professionalism, your uh, handling of the objections were spot on. But your confidence is what really resonated with me that I knew that moment that you're going to you're going to do really well. And basically the rest is history. You know, my opinion of you is, uh, you know, you're you're very, very humble. You're uh, a, a hardworking uh, mom and, and a wife as well with two small children. Earlier, before we even jumped on the uh, call, I had your son, you know, saying hello to us, you know, but that's, that just shows the nature of who you are, you know, and, you know, you, you definitely, with the background of experience, being a flight attendant, um, uh, working in the, uh, in the gym industry, and now getting into real estate, you know, you, you understand customer service and the importance of customer service and listening to your clients' needs and wants, right? Um, and now, you know, I, I also remember when you transitioned to our office, you became a rookie of the uh, year. So that was an exciting moment to you because we were having conversations like, you know, something is just not working for me. You know, you kept hitting walls, you kept hitting challenges. And then little by little, just things started opening up, opportunities started happening. And now we're here, you know, now with, with two kids. <laughs> So that's super exciting. <clears throat> so tell us a little bit of, um, you know, the pandemic that that uh, uh, stop you from uh, succeeding or did that actually boost your business? When the pandemic hit, of course, you know, nobody really saw that coming. So it was a little bit of a, yeah, kind of weird time, right? Right. And honestly, um, I didn't let it sort of get to me in a way where I was like, oh, no, like no more open houses. Um, oh, can't like, you know, do this, can't do that. I didn't focus on what I can't do. I focused on what I can do. Yeah. So what I basically just did was, you know, this is the start of, of my career and I'm not going to let this you know hold me back so all I did was adapt so instead of okay we can't do in-person showings you know I just did the virtual tours I just embraced it um, because I think in any kind of situation that's unexpected and happens suddenly you know you can't really control what's you know happening but you can just adapt to the situation and focus on, instead of focusing on the problem, just focus on the solution. So right. I was still, you know, fully there for my clients, whatever they needed, and always willing to just go and do like a virtual tour or, you know, a Zoom meeting, whatever it took, um, because I didn't really let it sort of stop me. And if anything, yeah, it, actually ended up catapulting like my business I just started to really do well like started getting consistent um transactions closed because no matter what's going on there's always going to be people that want to buy and sell okay. no matter what you know they they all have that need you know it, it you don't know what's going on. I mean, I had one client who um, she was in a bad situation, like she'd been stuck living in a hotel and just needed to get out of there. And it had been several months and so many people like had kind of given up on her because, you know, she didn't have like um, a, she didn't like look great on paper, but I 
ended up like fighting for her, represented her really well. And we got her into a place. And um, I think actually also about 90% of my clients, they've all become friends of mine. And when you're, you know, a good friend, you're just there for them when they need you. So that's also the way I am in my business. I just try to listen and be there for them and support them. And um, I think that's probably just what's helped me get this far as well. You know, because people yeah. will know if you're being genuine or not. So I'm not in it just like, I, I know like now in the beginning you're kind of like oh I really need to get a sale like but at the same time you don't want that to kind of come across because it's not all about like okay I need to close this deal make some money it's about like you have to be patient because not everybody is going to want to buy or sell in that very moment but if you're just there for them you're transparent you're open and you know you're you're caring then whenever that time does come they will reach back out to you and you know because they'll remember that how you made them feel absolutely 100 percent. you are so spot on on that heather um has all your real estate transactions been easy (laughs) you know for a fact definitely not (laughs) Um, I've had all kinds of crazy, crazy transactions. Um, right. One that kind of... So you're saying that real estate is not easy? I thought it's, it's just like the buyer and the seller, right? Yeah. Right off the top of my head, um, I don't know how much time we have. I've got a couple of... Um, yeah, you stories. still have a few I'll minutes. Try, I'll try and uh, make them quick. So um, there was one one uh, listing I had um, in Lakewood and I think you remember this one um, so we had listed our home for sale we priced it right but we just weren't getting that much action but we did end up getting under contract like after about a week or two which but back then that was still a long time and uh, but then the buyers got cold feet and ended up cancelling escrow so I had to quickly, you know, find another solution and, you know, reach out to all the other interested buyers who had said, oh, you know, we're under escrow already. Well, I found someone who was like, okay, uh, we want to go see it like right now. Can we go? And then I reached out to her to like find out because she's still occupying the place. Well, at the time she was out of town and she said, oh, my place is a mess. Can you like go there and clean it up for me? So I had to drop everything I was doing, drive across, you know, to where she lives, which was like on, you know, on the four or five in the middle of rush hour and go and like frantically clean her place. So it's show ready. And it was a mess. She had clothes out all over the living room. Um, There was like she hadn't even cleaned up from dinner the previous night. So it's like all dirty dishes in the sink. And so I had like about. 20 minutes to get the place spick and span and so I was just running around like a headless chicken like I had to make her bed throw all the toys under like literally you were going and, above and beyond <laughs> yeah and then um yeah. I'd literally just finished cleaning when the buyers showed up at the front door and I opened like hello <laughs> and uh then I'm happy to report that they actually did subsequently put in an offer, which we accepted. And then, yeah, they were the ones that we ended up closing with. So thank God my efforts uh, were <laughs> worth it. That's what sold them. Yeah. So that was uh, one kind of funny anecdote. Then I have another. Um, this one was super challenging, actually. So um, it was a uh, gentleman who his father had passed away and he was um, selling the home for him. And uh, so he was like the trustee. And actually this is my first trustee sale as well. So I was kind of like learning this as I went along. Um, And what made it complicated was uh, all of this, uh, the gentleman who was the owner, I guess he was the grandfather. Um, He had like all these distant relatives, like grandkids, like nieces, nephews that were all staying there. But I don't think they were like paying any rent. They were just kind of like, you know, hanging out. And um, so anyways, 
I don't know where sort of there was a miscommunication, but they put up a fight when we were trying to do showings and um, we already had like a buyer who's like, okay, we're going to get some contractors in because it was a fixer and needed work. And they're like coming in there to try and like, you know, they, they clearly knew what's going on because they're coming in there to do bids, like see how much the work is going to be. And um, well, we went by there, I think, like just to sign some more paperwork with uh, my client. And then they just started like getting into a huge argument and shouting match. And it was just super awkward. <laughs> um, and so it was almost like we had to kind of almost threaten them like with a sheriff to like forcibly remove them. Cause you know, like they said in the contract, like it needs to be delivered vacant, but they were really putting up a fight and didn't want to leave. Um, and then on top of that, okay, we got them out um, in a hotel. And then um, I think we were kind of worried that they were going to come back because the locks weren't changed yet. Oh, it was just such a headache. Like oh, I was losing sleep over this. And then on top of that, I thought like, that's the worst of it. But no, there was like this beat up RV in the driveway that um, was still left there and um, didn't work. Like it didn't even operate. So it was like trying to uh, maneuver this like broken down RV that was stuck in the driveway that was all rusty and stuff. And I was even trying to put it on offer up for free. And uh, yeah, it was just crazy. But, um, and then some guy said that he's gonna come there and take it, but then he didn't. And it was just like, I don't know, never ending like uh, crazy, the, the ups and the ups and downs of real estate. Yeah, yeah. and I mean, finally were... they they got it out of there, and we were able to close escrow. But it it was it was definitely a headache all the way through. I mean, I I did not come out of that like um, feeling you know too great. It was it was definitely um, I felt like beat up after that. <laughs> well, very cool. Thank you, thank you so much for sharing. Well, before we uh, open it up for questions, uh, Heather, give us one nugget, uh, one thing that you can uh, share with the group that will help any of the uh, people on the call get a potential potential deal, potential listing, or even a client. Um, well, I'm glad that the pandemic has somewhat like uh, got better, right? <laughs> um, so I feel like now I am always saying yes to any invites uh, because this is an opportunity to meet people and get out there and talk to them right. so um i'm happy like really happy that i'm able to sort of get out and be face to face with people and get to know them and make friends and you know like maybe their friends of friends want to buy or sell because everyone is potentially a prospect at some point, right? And it's just, it's pretty much like a numbers game. The more people you know, the more likely it is that you will have um, someone that eventually turns into um, a client of yours. So, and of course, like if they're your friends or family, that's already like uh, an advantage, I guess, because they do already know and trust you as opposed to just like a stranger who they don't know, right? So um, I, to cut it short, I do try to make sure I um, attend all these like birthday invites and get togethers and church things because you never know who you might come across that, you know, needs, needs a realtor. Yep. <laughs> so um, I definitely think like for me anyway, we're all social beings. Um, being stuck in lockdown for so long was tough. And um, now I'm just embracing being able to kind of like socialize again. And you never know who you might meet. So for me, it's all about just getting yourself out there and having conversations with people. And um, you never know where it could lead. 100%, absolutely. It's a contact sport, right? Yeah. 
every uh, every person that you meet is a potential client. It can be a buyer, it can be a seller, it can be an investor. It can even be a developer, knowing that um, they are looking for acres of property to develop, you know, uh, housing. So yeah, the opportunities are out there. The question is, are you out there looking for business, right? Because no one knows that you're in real estate until you start having conversations. Awesome, uh, Heather. Thank you so much for sharing. So we have a couple of questions here. One of them says, how do you normally get your uh, listings and buyers? We'll go with that. All right. Uh, well, for listings, um, how I get my listings or used to. So <laughs> um, my husband, um, he actually works for a moving storage company. So what he does can kind of like nicely go hand in hand with, you know, real estate. So um, he would just pretty much ask the right questions with, uh, with the clients that were calling in, you know? So, I mean, 90% of the time, by the time they're actually calling the moving company, they've already like got their house on the market and, you know, using the realtor. But on the odd occasion that they kind of did it the other way around, like they're getting moving quotes before they've, you know, like put their home for sale and they haven't got a, um, a realtor that they're using yet, that would usually be my opportunity. So he would kind of um, ask the right questions and then, that was my way in to get a listing appointment. So um, it's it's really thanks to him that I got a lot of listings, um, referrals, shall we say. And then as far as buyers, um, buyers, I normally, I have like, okay, in the beginning I used Zillow. Um, people love it or hate it, but Zillow is a huge platform where a lot of people do go on and so for me when I was racking my brains like how can I um how can I get you know buyers um that was what I used in the beginning but it does cost an arm and a leg so yeah. I kind of just like uh ended up using that for like six months to a year and then those buyers that were nurture leads eventually like a year or two later I still was able to convert and uh who else mm. yeah I think I'm I'm not ashamed to say like I buy leads um because yeah it's pretty much like I don't have that much time so I don't have time to like sit and make a hundred cold calls and I used to do that in LA Fitness and it was um, not really my thing. Um, I did it and it, it did work, but it takes a long time. And um, when you're short of time, I would rather just kind of go straight for like someone who is ready to buy like a hot lead. So that that's kind of like how I got my buyers. Beautiful, that's awesome. <clears throat> we have another question here. What platforms do you feel is most effective? Effective. Um, well, you know, with KW, we have command. Oh, and, um, command is good. Um, there is also the Op City, which um, I think they changed the name now, but I, I was using that too, even though it's just leases. But again, you know, if you can be patient and build a good relationship and rapport up with these um, people who are leasing, eventually at some point, you know, hopefully they are going to buy too. Or there is every chance that you could kind of compare how much, you know, they're paying to lease versus how much it would be for a mortgage. I think it's very helpful to actually like um, run the numbers for them. And uh I, so I did actually educate myself quite a bit on like the, the loan side of things, just so I was able to easily explain to my clients because I often would get questions about, oh, how much is it like for the interest rate and like all this stuff and like what other fees are involved? And so I really made sure I researched all of that properly because most of the time, you know, we say like, okay, let me just put you in touch with a, a loan officer who will be able to answer those questions. But I wanted to make sure that I'm armed and ready to 
to help them at least you know explain a little bit so that they they know that I'm actually going to explain to them what they want to know without like just referring them to somebody else um because I think we should have a little bit of knowledge there as well when it comes to numbers because it actually makes it easier um if you're able I mean at least for me I kind of work backwards so um with one of my previous clients he'd say oh like my budget is 400,000 but I I said to him well how much is your monthly budget and then kind of was able to work out, oh, okay, well, your mortgage would be this much. So actually your, your purchase price would be less than that. It would be more like 385 if you want it to be this monthly. So um, I think it's really powerful to just like know the numbers when explaining things to clients. Absolutely. Very good. Uh, any other questions before we uh, cut loose? Um, Kim Jordan, today's overview on UpCity. Yeah, thank you, uh, Kim. Absolutely. If you want to know more about UpCity, we're having a uh, class day from 2 to 3 p.m. No cost leads, getting started right now. Ready Connect uh, Concierge, formerly known as uh, UpCity with uh, Realtors.com Trainer. So here's the link. Thank you, Kim. Appreciate it. Any other questions? All right, we just got a lot of. Um, Praise, uh, Heather. Thank you so much. Thank and um, I see your dad's on the call here too. What a surprise. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. Well, Heather, um, I want to respect your time and your family. Thanks again. Really appreciate it. Keep up the good work. Stay in the game, like I always say. And uh, thank you everyone for uh, jumping on the call and being with us. Hopefully uh, this was of value to you. And uh, be looking out for future uh, events as well with the producer's mindset. Thank you, everyone, and have a phenomenal day. Talk to you soon. Thanks, Heather. Thank you so much. And by the way, um, shameless plug here, but if anybody needs a good moving company, um, go with Redondo Van and Storage and ask for Ricardo Tanada, <laughs> my husband. He, he will take good care of your clients. So Beautiful. I can uh, pop it in the chat box or yeah, go right ahead. Redondo Thanks, Raul. All right. All right. Thank you so much. Thank you, Thank you. Heather. Kim, did you uh, stop recording?